name is Roger Hanna. My PhD concerned the polarization of annihilation radiation. This was in the late 1940s. Uh, the point was the two gamma rays traveling in opposite directions which result are polarized at right angles. Now say the first electron, the first gamma ray, sorry, is goes to a, an analyzer and it either gets through or it doesn't. And depending what has happened to it, it mysteriously communicates with the other gamma ray as to what will happen to it when it goes through the, its analyzer. And this has always been a total mystery to me. I've had various explanations, but none of them really add up. And I gather the subject is still alive, and it's the subject of entanglement, which I would like to have disentangled. Hi, Roger. So you're asking me to disentangle or, or try to explain to you uh, the phenomena, the quantum mechanics of entanglement, which is a very subtle and um, difficult concept since quantum mechanics is so um, unusual, and strange from the point of view of our everyday classical experience. In quantum mechanics, you can indeed prepare a system of two photons with opposite polarizations easily, as you did, and separate those two photons by large distances, perform an experiment on one photon determining its polarization, at which point you immediately know the polarization of the other photon, must be reverse, uh, and that other photon might be very far away from you. An you know what the result of an experiment on the other side of the galaxy would be, uh, even though you could not, by any means we know, communicate that result to that experimenter. Uh, some people find this very strange. Uh, indeed, Einstein, who raised this concept as one of his objections to, the, to quantum mechanics, uh, felt that it was uh, an indication that quantum mechanics had to fail someplace. Because uh, it suggested, as you remarked yourself, that there was some communication between these two photons on opposite sides of the galaxy, and yet uh, we believe that information can't be communicated faster than the speed of light. Um, later, in the 60s, uh, John Bell, a uh, Scottish uh, theoretical physicist made this um, much sharper by proposing certain tests of exactly such a hypothetical experiment uh, which could distinguish between a quantum mechanical description which simply says, yes, there is a correlation between these photons no matter how far apart they are and that is not explained by any kind of in variable theory and things communicating with each other to establish the correlation. It's just the way we describe nature. That's quantum mechanics and a potential theory that Einstein would have been satisfied with of hidden variables, uh, but one in which you cannot have signals traveling faster than the speed of light. These, uh, the, the ability to distinguish between those then became an experimental question. And in fascinating experiments over the last 20 years, uh, experimenters have verified uh, with increasing precision and um, careful measurement that quantum mechanics works and the hidden variable deterministic theories that Einstein was proposing uh, simply are inconsistent with experiment. That doesn't that resolves the issue of the validity of quantum mechanics, uh, at least with respect to this question, but it doesn't satisfy many people who are still, who still have the desire, as Einstein did, to construct a classical description of reality that somehow is behind the quantum, the quantum mechanical description of reality which we use to correctly describe uh, these kinds of phenomena. I don't know how to uh, tell you more. I think you uh, will have to simply um, get used to it. 
The world is quantum mechanical and it is perfectly consistent, which is, that is the framework we use to describe nature now, uh, to have a description in which objects that are far apart and do not communicate with one another are still correlated. There's nothing inconsistent about that, which is why it works so well. It's just hard to get used to. <laughs>